Thank you. Uh, I'm Marcello Scalisi, the director of UNIMED. And with me from UNIMED side, there will be Emilia Stoduto and Natalie Krauter. And I'm very happy to welcome uh, the representatives of the Interreg Next Met uh, program that's accepted. And thanks for that to organize this webinar to introduce this important program of for the Euro. Mediterranean cooperation. I will introduce briefly our our speakers in a moment. Uh, I would like first to explain the reason why, as UNIMED, we consider this program dedicated to the Euro Mediterranean partnership very important. As you know, UNIMED is a network of universities. We have with us 164 universities from 27 countries, which is a little more little bigger than the Euro Mediterranean uh, dimension. We have with us all the universities, universities from all the Southern Mediterranean countries. But we have also members from Western Balkan, from the Gulf, from Middle East, from Iraq, from Yemen, in particular, the European Mediterranean countries, but also we have countries that are not so Mediterranean, like German, like Finland. Uh, it's a, a large network. We started in 1991, and little by little, we arrive at the number that I mentioned. You. We work with several programs of the Euro, the European, the European Commission, dedicated to the Euro-Mediterranean cooperation. Uh, mostly of them dedicated to academic cooperation, in particular through the Erasmus Plus program. Uh, but also we look to other possibility and other programs like the Interreg Euromed, the Interreg NextMed, the Horizon, uh, Horizon 20, the Horizon Europe, and also other activity founded by private foundation. Uh, this program is extremely interesting. And in particular, I think that it is interesting for universities. Uh, in the Rasmus Plus family programs, we are used to cooperate among universities. It's in a way to, for instance, to transfer knowledge from the north to the south, or in mobility programs to encourage mobility opportunity for our students from the south to come to Europe, and with a different percentage also from the north to go to the south. Uh, but in the Interact Next Med program, the idea is a little different and at the same time more important, we say. The idea is not to transfer capacity, but to work together to find solutions to common problems that we have that affect us. And that, the other element, very, very important, I'm not going to, to, to spoil the program, of course, but something just on the line from the academic point of view, from the university point of view, the reason why this program should be highly considered by our colleagues is that in the projects that I hope you are going to submit, the partnership should be a partnership very diverse. We need to include actors coming from different uh, players of our society. And these enrich all the actors and reach universities, and reach local authorities, and reach private sector, is not just a cooperation among universities, but again, with other players looking for solutions, looking for concrete solutions. And I think that this could give to our societies at local, regional, and national level very important opportunities for uh, improve our, our activity, improve our capacity, and in a way to contribute to the future of our Mediterranean generation. I think that I used my five minutes to in, in, encourage uh, uh, to attending the, our participants to join uh, the webinar. And I'm very pleased now to give the floor to uh, our colleagues, our friend Vincent, Vincent Arnoux, which is program coordinator of of the Western Mediterranean of the Interact Next Med uh, program. Vincent, the floor is yours. Interact Next Med is about one thing, to address Mediterranean challenges and to jointly propose solutions to these challenges. As you have already introduced, uh, Marcello, I think you have 
understood and assimilated very well the philosophy of the program. Thank you very much for organizing this event. And uh, I think we are now more than 109 persons uh, connected. That's quite amazing, especially by the times that are passing. We know how difficult it is to join uh, to gather so many people in a webinar. So uh, congratulations also for this. There is no way that we can address the Mediterranean challenges and propose relevant solutions to these challenges without the Mediterranean universities. That is obvious. It would be like running a race with a car with three wheels, and we don't want to do this. So this uh, event today, thanks to UNIMED, is also a call for you because we want you to join the upcoming first call for proposal that is going to be launched very, very, very soon. That is maybe today, maybe tomorrow, or in a few days at most. Today, we are going to present you the program because I understand that some of you know us very well, but other of you do not know us very well. So you need maybe some uh, basic information also, and that will be my part. Then my colleagues will show you some features of the first call for proposals, and they will also address uh, the way you, you can search for partners and the tools that we will have at disposal for partner search. I will now share my presentation with you, which you will see is uh, quite basic, just the first one. And as I said, it is um, also very interesting for those of you who do not know the program. Okay. So discovering the new Interact NextMed program, you know, well, it's new, but uh, now it's uh, more than two years that we say that it's new. So it's not really brand new, but for us, it's still, still new in the sense that we have still not launched the call and it's going to be done very, very soon, as I said before. At a glance, uh, you know that we were not part of the Interact family before, and now we are. That's why we're called Interact Next Med. Next stands for external action. So we're now part of the family. Uh, why does it matter for you? It matters because that means that now we are following the same regulations as the other Interact program. That's an important point. And that is also a guarantee that in a certain way, we are going to be, let's say, a bit more simple than in the past because our rules are bound to these regulations. So good news, I think. There, you know that Interreg is a, is a very, very vast and huge uh, instrument of the Euro European Union. Uh, it's, uh, it has four strands and we are in strand B. This is very technical, but you will hear this quite a lot during the programming period. So you get you you better get used to it. We are strand B, meaning transnational programs. And that's good because we are no more a cross-border program, which was quite strange for us because we, we never uh, address real cross-border issues, but rather sea basin issues. So now it's more coherent. We are a transnational program. There are only two Interact Next programs uh, that are transnational, which is our and the Interact Black Sea program, where I think some of you can also participate. Uh, you know that now it's the third edition. Um, Marcello was there at the first edition, so and, and I was there. <laughs> so the old people now. Uh, it's uh, the third edition, and uh, the first one was called EMPI, the second ENI, for those of you we have participated there. We are still the same people, basically the same people. Now we build on the experience of 80 ENI CBC MED pro projects and more than 95 ENPI CBC MED projects, more than 1,300 1, partners. That's a massive basis of partners that have some experience in the program and that may uh, be contacted or joined or that may be interested at a certain point to be part of the, um, of the new poll. It's a very amazing. We still have uh, basic principles and we still want to contribute to, of course, this is our main duty because 
we are part of the uh, European Union neighborhood policy. So we want to create a neighborhood area of joint prosperity, of stability, and security. That's the overall goal. We'll see then afterwards our visions. Key principles you can see there. Um, this is not only theory. The key principles, you should understand them very well if you are going to submit a proposal because this, there should be reflected all across your proposal. And co-ownership, for example, means that we want a proposal to be submitted, to be owned by all the partners, not only by one partner, by one shore, but by all of you. So we want something, a, a joint work. Balanced partnership goes in the same way and common benefits goes in the same way. So it all goes in the way that we want something in common, both shores, not, and also that was said by Marcello, which, which is uh, quite aware of the program. We don't want north, north to south cooperation. That's not the point. We want north-south and south-north, east-west, west-east. So we want a uh, uh, balanced cooperation. So very much at a glance, because this is rather internal, or it looks like internal, but at some moment, it can also be interesting for you. The managing authority of the program is still based in Sardinia, Italy. Uh, some of the colleagues are still there. So you know them, you know Martin, and you know Aldo. Um, they are there. Then we have a monitoring committee, which is the committee that takes the decisions on the program. And it is composed of one member by each country, meaning 15 members. We then have an assessment board. The assessment board will be the structure that will select the projects, in one word. And it will also be composed by a member of each country. Then you have the structures, managing authority, the GS, that will be there also in Sardinia, and then the two branch offices. For those of you which um, represent countries on the eastern side of the Mediterranean, you have a branch office based in Aqaba in Jordan. And for those of you who, who live in, uh, in Italy, Spain, and the western part, let's say, Algeria and Tunisia also, you uh, are under the coverage of the Western Mediterranean branch office based in Valencia, my colleagues and myself, always there to support you. Of course, we have uh, audit structures. It's not the point now. You may have to receive their visit one day. It's not a lucky day, but it happens. And then you have the national structures in the case of, uh, oh, let, let's take the case of Italy, you have the region of Puglia. In the case of, of Spain, you have the uh, Ministry of, of Finance. In the case of Tunisia, for example, you have the Ministry of Economy. So it depends on each country, but they play an important role because you can contact them and they can support you and guide you all along the application process, but also all along the life of the project. So this slide is uh, my favorite one. It's very basic, uh, but it's it's the truth about our program. It's our vision, and our vision is your vision, because there is no program without projects. We can do nothing without you. And what we want is to contribute to a smarter, to a greener, and to a more social majoring. That's easy. And we want to do this through the powerful tool of cooperation, which is a trademark tool of this program also a cooperation that involves, that reaches, and that impact on people. That is our vision. Easy, but this, you also have to take this into account when you drop the proposal or when you integrate a partnership. Because if your proposal doesn't reflect this overall goal, of course, you're not going the right way. This is the map of the program. You, you know that we all like maps. Uh, we now have 15 countries. In the countries or in some countries, we have uh, all the regions. And in some other countries, we only have the Mediterranean regions. Like in the case of Italy, where you do not have the Adriatic, and you do not have uh, the North region. What we have, uh, and it is 
very important to remark. It is now, uh, now, but we have two newcomers, which are Turkey and Nigeria. So if you are listening to us from Turkey, from Nigeria, please be welcome in joining the program. We are also counting on you to integrate the, the, the proposals or even to submit your own proposals and search for partners. And for the rest of countries, uh, of course, be aware that we have these two newcomers that you can count on them. You can see that we are we have the, the biggest uh, cooperation program in the Mediterranean. We cover more than 90 territories, regions are equivalent, and more than 200 million people. In fact, we are the biggest, and we also like to say, and it's not only that, we are sure of it, that we are the best program in the Mediterranean. And um, we are confident that you will also feel it that way. And this, even if we have uh, somehow black allegiance in terms of bureaucracies, but you know that we are working on this, and then, then, then the next program will be uh, simpler than the other, than the previous ones. Yeah, so you can see that there is a, a remark on the bottom of the, of the page. Uh, of course, the code is going to be launched in a few days. Some countries have already signed the financing agreement. Some countries, non-European uh, countries, they have to sign the financing agreement to be able to receive funds from the European Union. When we publish the call, we will also publish countries that have already signed the financing agreement and the rest, uh, we, we think we are convinced, in fact, we're convinced that they will sign before the end of um, the submission deadline. So, but yes, this is information you will have to take into account also when you build your proposal. This is a slide that um, is more important than what it looks. You can see the evolution of um, EU contribution that was available for the program, first generation, third, second generation, third. And you can see that there is a substantial increase and that is not nothing because if you have followed uh, the evolution of, of the policy uh, of um, the cohesion policy and also, and also the FEDER, ERDF during the, the last programming period, you know that there is less global budget than before. And we are among the very few programs that have been able to increase the budget in such a time of budget restriction. So I think that it shows also that we have showed and you have showed, because let's remember again, we are nothing without you, without projects and partners. We have altogether showed that we um, have we created much added value and that we go in the way of our vision, meaning creating a better Mediterranean, and that the European Commission believes in that. So we now also have a very strong responsibility because we have to be sure that uh, in this coming period, we are going to manage things in, in, the, in the right way and that we um, will still be accountable for maybe not more budget if, if it's not necessary, but at least for a budget which is similar or or any way uh, suitable to our needs and to your needs. So I think it's 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 very important to remark this. An increase in times of uh, budget restrictions. That uh, would uh, that slide would take um, half an hour to tell you, so I'm not going to tell you uh, in details, but just a few words on the on the, uh, the structure, on the hierarchy of the program in uh, from the thematic point of view. We have four policy objectives that we now call priorities. So we have uh, pri first one is dedicated to, to create a smarter Mediterranean, second, a greener, third, more social, and the fourth, which is a bit different to the rest, is uh, dedicated to create a, a better cooperation governance of the Mediterranean. That's for the priorities, and we have been able, the, 
the states participating in the program have been able to select only nine specific objectives among those many that were that were available from the European Commission and that are supposed to reflect the most urgent or the most important uh, upon the upon the states uh, challenges of the Mediterranean when the pro when the program was drafted meaning a couple of years ago and what we find is um, the traditional Mediterranean challenges those that we cannot skip that we will never skip because it's impossible and we're talking of water for example we're talking of um, SMEs we cannot uh, do a program without SMEs we're talking also of training of um, improving the employability of young people or vulnerable people and we're talking of energy efficiency also so topics that were there from the very beginning of the program or from the last one we find innovation very important for you i mean in, in innovation um the universities have had a massive presence in our, in our program but not only of course and then we find also some um new thematic commerce not really new in some cases but new uh, in an explicit way, which uh, are, for example, 2.2, the adaptation to climate change, and especially to um, disaster risk prevention, resilience, and all that goes with reducing, or rather say, adapting to the consequences of natural catastrophes provoked, uh, generated by climate change. We also find 2.4, circular economy, and creating a more efficient in resources economy. This is not new for the program. Maybe some of you have been participating in projects dealing with circular economy, but now it is new at program level as a specific uh, objective with a specific budget. So this is now being upgraded as a thematic. It is one of the major thematics. We find two real newcomers that were not there before in no way which is the 3.2, equal access to health. And that what we are going to look for is projects that are dealing with how can we improve the access to health, essential health services in the Mediterranean with special attention, for example, to, um, to, the, to the way uh, people can access uh, health in uh, remote or in in um, in, uh, in digital di digital way, because we have uh, realized that there there is still a gap, and with the means of the program, it, because you know that this is a two hundred fifty three million program, so we're not going. Of course, we're not going to build a hospital, but we can improve some of the aspects that are not working and one of them not working in some places of course not everywhere and one of them may be the digital access of some people to uh, medical and health care and the 4.1 will be dedicated to governance so that's a very different specific objective uh, than the rest in fact, and you will see that in the next presentation, it will be a dedicated and specific type of projects. So it's very different with a different type of budget, etc. But in a few words, um, with this specific objective, what we intend at program level is to improve the way the public services are delivered by the administrations and the way the public administrations are related with the citizens. So the, the relations between citizens and public administration with the final goal of improving the public services. Also there, we are aware that we have a limited budget. We're not going to change everything, but we are certain that there are elements, specific challenges, very specific challenges indeed, that we can address and that we can put a little brick in, in the wall and, and improve things. We have seen the, the, the thematic strategy. This is the 
call strategy. And um, the first call is about to be launched, 133 million. That means that you cannot wait for the second call because this is a huge, huge part of the budget. You have seen before, 253 million and more than 100 million already at stake during the first call. So participate in the first call. This is absolutely necessary if you have any interest in the program. Then we'll have a second call. Second call that we expect to launch um, during the second semester of 2024. And don't think that we'll, we will be as delayed as for the first call because for the second call, we will already know which countries have signed a financing agreement. So we will not have to wait forever. So we should be able to launch the call um, maybe in September, October of next year. This will be a call open to all specific objectives in principle that are related to green transitions or that can be related to green transitions because they're specific. The first call is very general. We don't have a specific focus. The second call would have a focus on generating green transit, green results that contribute to a smooth green transition. That means they will address the specific objectives, but with an extra goal of delivering green results. Anyway, we will draft terms of reference for this and we'll come to you uh, later, but messages don't lose the first call. If you go for the first call and you miss it, you still have the second one. Because then afterwards we'll have two extra calls, but that will be limited. We'll have a capitalization call and we'll have a consolidation call and the consolidation call will be only open to those who have participated in previous calls with an approved project. So really big message, participate in the first call. That is all from my side. Um, just a final message before I pass the floor to my colleagues. As said at the beginning, we cannot um, address the many train challenges without you, universities. You are very important in the program, though we are not a research program, this is very clear, but you still have an important role to play. Research can also integrate it all, program, all projects. That's not impossible. But we want our projects to be as complete as possible and to address the challenges in the more complete way as possible. So we also, we also need the input of the researchers, the input of the universities, and we need you to work in close collaborations with the other key stakeholders that are, as usual, the public administrations, the private sector, the research centers, and so on. So please, we are waiting for you. Call is about to be launched and you know the branch office is available for you anytime. Thank you so much for your attention and good luck uh, when you will be uh, presenta presenting or integrating the partners. Good luck. Thank you very much. Grazie mille, Vincent. Very clear uh, presentation. I think that the message that, that you addressed to our uh, participant is uh, very, very interesting and important not only for the very concrete information but that also that you mentioned about the importance of this the call that will be launched so in particular for the vision because it's important and, and we continuously underline to our colleagues that it's not just too important just to try to answer to the call but to to enter inside the philosophy of the program and if possible to read all the documents that created in a way, uh, make, it, make this program possible, uh, because it's the only way to enter inside this uh, philosophy, this vision, and to properly contribute and answer to uh, the, the, the request of the, the, uh, the authority. Uh, thanks a lot, and I think that we can move now to Jumana's ways, that we continue in uh, more of uh, other concrete, another concrete presentation on the program. Thanks, Shumana, also for the preparation phase for what you did with us. Thank you very much. And Vincent, 
thanks a lot again for your contribution. I know that you have to leave earlier uh, the meeting, but we will stay in touch. Thank you again for the Thanks to you, Marcello. Amazing work. Thanks. To, to, to introduce the program to our members and participants, to our audience. And the floor is uh, Germana. Please, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for UNIMED team for this initiative to reach out more Mediterranean universities and a special thank to Marcello Scalisi, to Natalie Plotter and to Emilia Stoluto. Um, so today I'm going to enter into more details about the call which is about to be launched. I'm going to share my, my screen so I can, um, you can see the, the presentation. Can you say it properly? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Oh, I forgot. It's a PDF. And it's not a PowerPoint. Um, so as my colleague Vincent uh, mentioned previously, this program um, will is dedicated to fund projects covering three um, covering four program priorities and divided into nine specific objectives. The budget of the first call will be uh, 103 million euro, which represents about 40% of the total budget available of our program. And uh, as you may know, most of the interreg program usually receive a European EU co-fund uh, between up to 70 to 80% of the total cost of a project. In our case, this percentage can be a little bit uh, higher and can be up to 89% of the total cost of the project, which is quite attractive. I like to underline the up to, which means you don't necessarily have to ask for a co-fund of uh, 89. It can, you can ask for 60, uh, 65, whatever, and the maximum uh, contribution is uh, 89%. Um, so this means that, that if you ask for the, the maximum uh, contribution of the EU from the partners and coordinator sites, each one has to contribute with 11% of the cost of the project. Um, within, so you have the topics of the, of the projects we would like to fund, but we also have different type of projects that I'm going to detail in a while. And also, I want to, um, again, re remind that we are talking about a cooperation, a territorial cooperation program between both shores of the Mediterranean. So the prerequisite to um, start preparing a proposal and present is to have at least one partner from Mediterranean EU countries and at least one partner for what, what we call Mediterranean partner countries. What are the Mediterranean partner countries? They are the participating countries from uh, MENA region, from the Maghreb uh, and Middle East uh, region. Um, so to have some details about what type of projects we are talking about, as I said, there are three types. Um, all the project uh, duration would be between two and three years. As you can see, depending on the type of the project, you may have a maximum of seven partners or a maximum of five partners or six. And the um, budget for each project, the, the least would be for the type of project oriented, youth oriented projects with a minimum uh, budget of 500 um 500,000 euros, and the maximum would be for a thematic project up to 2.5 million euros per project. As you can see on the left part, um, thematic and youth oriented projects um, are not open to, to governance, and, and, and that's it. <laughs> uh, next. So just to explain a little bit what I just said about why they are open or not, as you can see from the gray uh, array, thematic and youth oriented projects, you can present them under the priority one, two, and three, while governance is a, a specific type uh, of project. And 
I will take a, some time just to give you one or two examples so you have an idea of what kind of project we are talking about. Um, let's uh, let's talk about water. Water is clearly a an important common challenge for the Mediterranean area uh, because of uh, lack of rain and uh, many countries participating in our uh, program are water stress countries. And one of the, the priorities we use to, to fund is how to promote the reuse of gray water for irrigation. Uh, in some countries, uh, farmers are still reluctant to use uh, gray water or, or they don't have the, the specific techniques and so on. So um, an example of a of a, such a project would be to have different institutions from different countries tackling different angles of the water resources. Uh, we can have uh, engineers or, and agronomists from universities. We can have uh, schools uh, as a pilot where you can implement a pilot, uh, an experimentation about water reuse. And you can have uh, the ministry uh, as a national authority. Um, so this is so so this is just an example to to show how different type of organization can co collaborate together. And then you you can see that you will, for for instance, try to make like a pilot experimentation about water reuse, um, in uh, in the south of Spain, in Greece, in Jordan, in Lebanon. And you are trying to test a solution, but then you have to take into account the, the characteristic of each country because the, the, let's say in the south of Spain, you have plenty of land. In a country like Lebanon, the land is, is more reduced. I mean, the idea is to, to develop and test new solution, which address a common problem, but taking into account the specificities of each uh, territory. Um, I'm going to move to the next slide. Um, so let's talk about the youth-oriented project. Honestly, this is the first time that we, we are uh, going to fund this type of project. And the idea comes from the, the, the reflection that so far we have many young people, Mediterranean people taking part in our project, but as final beneficiaries. And we want to give more uh, and, and a more important role to young people by switching from this idea of simple beneficiaries to actor of change and to really lead and, 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 and propose a project and implement it. Because we think that who are the best people to know what are youth problems, the youth themselves. So this is uh, probably kind of experiment, but I think it's very interesting. And it's also a, a sign of trust towards our uh, young Mediterranean people. Uh, the size of the budget of the project will be um, less than a thematic project. And what the condition to apply uh, for a youth-oriented project is either you are an organization totally de dedicated to youth, to the youth, or uh, an organization which the people working in the organization are aged between 18 and 30 years old. Uh, about governance project, this one um, aims, the idea behind is to try to improve uh, the relationship between the citizen and local authorities and uh, try to work together to, to improve uh, some public services, for for instance. Um, according to me, this slide is the most important one because it really uh, gives you hints about what type of projects we would like to fund. The idea is not to start from, from zero, is not to reinvent the wheel, but uh, use uh, knowledge that already exists, results from previous projects that already have been worked on um, and start with, with all this work already done and test with pilots, with demonstrative actions, with um, experiments um, to see how it works, if it works well, if it can be replicated and if it can have some changes and, and, and an impact on not only social impact, environmental impact, but also 
technical and probably regulatory in the sense that you can, thanks to the result of this kind of pilot, you may demonstrate to, to policymakers that you need to adjust the regulation. Just an example, energy efficiency. Um, many people working in projects about energy efficiency say, yeah, but we don't have the regulation about it in our own country. So if you prove to the Ministry of Energy that this pilot works and you need to adapt the legislation to make it more possible and, and more replicable and expand it, then uh, you contribute to uh, the re regulatory uh, change in your own country or region. So uh, to sum up, uh, the focus is really on operational phase. We don't really want to fund uh, need analysis or uh, research uh, about uh, different region because this has been done not only by our by projects funded by our program but by many other international funders. And so I anticipated and already explained about the youth oriented. As you can see here, are the prerequisite to apply as a to to apply and and submit a proposal for youth oriented project. Um. And this is also about the governance that I've already um, explained. Okay, so let's talk about the logical framework. Uh, first of all, I want to remind that the three official language of the program are English, Arabic, and French. And you can submit a project proposal either in English or in French. And the submission will be through an e-platform. So it's everything online. And um, when you will start thinking about a proposal that address one of the uh, specific objective of our program, you will have to link. So you will think about different type of activities to implement the project. And these activities will lead to results. And these results ha have to be coherent to the results and the output that the program um, is expecting. So how you do that? First, you have to read uh, a, um, a document that we have elaborated where you, we, we explain all the indicators of the program and make sure that what you want to propose uh, from your project with these results, you will contribute to the program indicators. So it's kind of um, the overall objective of the project contributes to a specific objective of the program. So you can see from, from the slide the, the different level and how they have to be linked, what the project does to contribute to the, uh, the, the, the objectives of the program. And let me tell you what uh, document I highly recommend to, to read. I think it's a, a comprehensive document and also it, it has uh, a lot of details about definition, for example, one of the indicators would be how many uh, joint solutions you, you will have developed through your project. Yeah. And then you have a clear definition of what a solution is or what is a social enterprise or what a, a, cross, a, a transnational um, uh, operation means. Um, so, and that, yeah, the, the document is called a performance framework methodology paper. I will put the link in the chat after my presentation. So the, you have the direct link to, to this document and also to other to our presentations, by the way. Um, let's move. So as my, my colleague already said, um, in under Interreg NextMed, we have 15 participating countries. But when we talk about participating countries, we are not talking about the country as a whole. We are talking about eligible regions, eligible territories. So as you can see, when you talk about Portugal, it's only uh, Algarve in the south region of Portugal, which is eligible. Meanwhile, uh, Jordan, um, before it wasn't all the region, all, all the regions were not eligible, but under Interreg NextMed, uh, all all the country is uh, all the regions of the country are eligible. So as you can see, there are uh, seven EU countries and eight countries belonging to the MENA uh, region. Who can participate in this goal? 
I know most of you are probably either public or private universities, but it's good to know to which partner you may look for to, to build your partnership. So basically, uh, the first thing is that this entity has to be a legal entity. It's not for a physical person. And the entity has to be legally registered in one of the eligible territories at least two years before the launch of the call. Um, so once you, you, you are sure that the entity complies with this, uh, it can be either a municipality, it can be a governorate, Mohafada, for example, uh, it can be in ministry, um, also it can be bodies governed by public law according to the directive, European directive, as you can see here at the bottom of the slide. Um, in case of countries, uh, non-European countries, they, they, I, we recommend to check with the national contact point to make sure that the type of entity um, would be considered as a body gov uh, governed by public law. Um, private uh, organization can also um, be a partner in our projects. It can be either a non-profit organization or it also can be um, private companies and also international organization. Um, so something that's very important um, and it's probably the most complicated aspect of our program. As Vincent said, our program falls under this plan B, which is transnational program. What does that mean? Transnational program means that you have to demonstrate there's an added value of tackling this challenge, the Mediterranean challenge, by cooperating between different entities from different countries. It may sound obvious, but in many occasions, partners still have local vision. They think that, okay, we're going to make a pilot only in this place, but they don't, they, they have difficulties to show that in order to, to propose a solution, you can propose a solution thank the, thanks to the cooperation between the different entities. Um, this added value, Mediterranean added value or transnational uh, value, let's say, is um, evaluated and scored as double compared to any other criteria in the evaluation. So this is really makes the difference between um, a, such a um, transnational cooperation project compared to any other uh, project uh, related to water management in Jordan and funded by any other international organization. Um, as you, as a university, uh, you have many faculties and different departments, so you may want to apply to different projects. Um, you have to make sure that you can only apply as applicant, meaning as a coordinator for only one specific objective. You can apply as many projects as you want as partner, but if you're a coordinator, you only can apply for one uh, project to one specific objective. Uh, and in the case, uh, unfortunately, there's no such coordination between the different departments of the university. You have two um, applications as applicant, then none of them will be, uh, they will be rejected. Um, this is also an important rule about uh, our program is what we call the 50% budget rule, meaning that we want to make sure that half of the budget of the project goes to partners in the South and non-EU uh, partners. Uh, if the partnership is built in a way that you have more partners from the North and less partners from the South, then in order to reach this 50% minimum of budget towards the South, some of the EU partners can uh, foresee to implement some activities from their budget that goes to the benefit of Mediterranean partner countries. Uh, okay, so as you can see, we have published the, this presentation in October, uh, hoping that we would be able to launch the call by November, which was not the case, but uh, it's going to be very soon. Um, 
if you want, I can also so show you now, uh, just in a minute or two, uh, directly on the website where you can find all the, the information, or I just send you on the chat. And um, I want to sum up uh, what I, I said uh, to, during all this presentation. First of all, if you have identified a common Mediterranean challenge and you really want to uh, address this challenge because you, you think that by developing a joint solution between partners from different from a very different type of organization and from different countries, uh, and you can demonstrate the added value of this transnational cooperation, uh, then you will be interested by this program. You have to check um, if the entities you have identified as possible partners uh, belongs to the eligible region and if they uh, are legal entities register at least two years before the launch of the call. You, um, you have to make sure that the, the proposal that you are building addressed um, not only the specific objective but contribute to the indicators set by the program and um, also there is another document which is important to to have in mind it's about synergies make sure that what you want to propose contribute to a bigger a regional um, action plan or or initiative let's say you can demonstrate how your proposal can contribute to some of the sustainable uh, development goals of the United Nations, for example, or uh, other Mediterranean plan regarding the environment and so on. Um, another recommendation, um, check your financial capacity. What does that mean? Uh, if you as a partner are a small NGO and you are used to, to handle a budget of about 50,000 euro per year and you are asking for a, a 200,000 euros, um, co-funding for this project, then we might be, um, we, we will check, uh, we will ask you some financial data about your organization to make sure that you have the financial capacity to assume this budget. Because even if it's a grant, uh, at some point of the implementation project, you may need to advance the, 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 the cash flow. So this is something that sometimes we, we forget about it. So make sure that you, you also are uh, requesting an amount of money that your organization can handle without problem. And also it's very important to make sure that the staff who will be implementing the project have a good level of English uh, or French as the working language of, uh, of our program is mainly in these uh, two languages. Thank you very much. I'm available for any question, either on the chat or just if you want to on, on live, let me, uh, I'll be more than happy to, to answer your question. Many thanks, Jumana, for your presentation. Very important also your presentation. Please share in the chat the link that you mentioned and also the performance document and so on. We will obviously, after this presentation, we will inform all the participants uh, that the presentation is already you, uh, all the documents will be published also on our website website I, I see that there is some people that uh, raise their rent I can't let you your, uh, your question in the chat uh, and we will share everything at the end of course we will share not only the recording of this uh, uh, webinar, but also all the document available. Uh, I have some questions, but I think that it's better to go to the next speaker, Alejandro Lafarga, uh, that will continue the presentation on the program and to leave uh, some part at the end of the, the webinar, some time for questions and comments, uh, not only from our side, but more importantly, from our participant side. Alejandro, the word is, the, the word is yours. The floor is yours, sorry. Uh, hello, good morning, everyone. Salo uh, Jalher, uh, bonjour a tous, Calimera. So yes, I'm Alejandro Lafarga. I work here also on the on the on, on the Valencia branch office of the of the program. And today, uh, well, 
not that you have of this uh, 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 input on the on the on the on the program on the call, and not that you are all uh, eager to submit a proposal and with lots lo lo of um, enthusiasm with the with this new new call. I'm trying to give you some tips and some uh, uh, useful uh, data uh, on how can you build your partnerships and and what we will offer. Um, uh, as well uh, to help you to uh, build your construction. So I'm going to share my screen. I will deliver a very quick presentation because I only have some, some tips. But, uh, okay, and this, let me know if you see now everything well. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to uh, build your partnership and some data that you might uh, take into account. First of all, some uh, things that you heard uh, already. So our this call will require that at least three countries are uh, represented in the um, in the partnership, and one of them should be uh, from the Mediterranean partner country and one a EU uh, member uh, country. So uh, this is the the minimal uh, uh, the, the requirement that I would advise you to maybe have more. I mean, uh, most of partnerships of the uh, current program of uh, uh, ENICPC Med they have four, five, six. Uh, uh, I mean, eight partners. So having only one partner from 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 the other shore of the of the Mediterranean might be. A bit uh, risky because, as we said previously, if the partners from the Mediterranean partner countries must manage at least fifty percent of the budget. It means that if you only choose one partner of a Mediterranean partner country, this partner should have uh, the um, uh, half of the budget of the total project. So we are talking about a lot, and it will jeopardize a bit the assessment in the okay by the by the experts so i would advise you to have more than one partner of the of uh, in the in the Mediterranean partner countries uh, partnerships usually are larger five six partners and seven so try to keep uh, several in each side um so the program uh, to help you to find your uh, uh, partners. Of course, now we are talking here with a network of uh, universities, so I'm sure that you will have uh, already uh, uh, um, strong links among you, and I'm sure that you are able to cooperate um, among you. So you could start building your partnerships with um, uh, some members of the universities, but you might try also to find partners in other contexts and other other countries, other 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 types of entities. So what we will offer uh, to you are several things. First of all, uh, right after we launch the call, we will also uh, announce a set of uh, um, in-person events to present the call in every country. So we'll go to uh, every uh, every country that will be uh, in the in a program in presence to present you the call and to and to meet you physically there and answer your questions there. So that will be a first um, step in which you you can uh, enter um, in touch with other entities. But that as these events will be one per country, in those events you will find most likely other entities from the same country. And since you have to find partners in other countries, we will enable other other means. And one of them will be a partnerships platform. So we will open this uh, uh, online uh, platform in which uh, you will be able to submit on an uh, e-form uh, uh, either your idea of a project or just uh, um, the person yourself, your profile, your expertise, uh, your previous project, and and just to um, uh, show the others what you are capable of. So this inform you will fill it, and we will then put this information in an open canvas, in which we will display uh, all the proposals received. 
And in those proposals, we will also display the contact details of the uh, of, um, entity. So you will be able to be contacted by other entities that that are uh, searching for partners, or you will be able to find the contact details of the other entities. My personal advice is that uh, try to submit an idea rather than your profile, because if you are presenting anything, uh, you are demonstrating that you have some, uh, you, you are proactive. You are demonstrating that 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 you have some ideas to 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 develop, and maybe you will find other entities that have similar ideas, and you can merge them, so you can present a, um, a stronger proposal combining the ideas and the expertise of several entities. And by the other by, by the other hand, what we will also uh, enable will be or, or we will uh, organize different uh, partner search online sessions. So starting from uh, the ideas received, we will uh, present a calendar of online meetings open to anyone. Uh, and, uh, and the main goal is to make nine, so one per each uh, specific objective. And in er uh, every meeting, people who or entities who submitted uh, ideas and which are uh, available in the on the on the open canvas we will be able to uh, pitch them and present them and after it we will give some time for question and answers or even we will open uh, rooms so you, 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 you can go you, you, you can go and discuss your ideas and your proposals with other entities in there so then the our goal is to uh, create an, 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 an space and an, a moment in which you, you can exchange. And this is also important because um, it's also important to listen how the others present their ideas, how clear they are. Um, and you, you know that there are some, some, some uh, features that you can understand them better when you listen to people presenting. So, uh, both for the uh, platform and the online sessions, all this will be announced in our program website a few days later, the uh, announcement of the call. And I saw in the in the questions and answers, uh, one question that was like, uh, how long will be uh, uh, the call open? I guess it will be around three months, maybe more. And our main goal will be to help the, the physical information sessions per per country I, I guess they will be uh, from the the end of January and especially in uh, February and for the partner shirts maybe a bit uh, earlier so I guess also that by the end of January we would be able to do all the all the partner shirts uh, sessions but before we will open the um, uh, the platform and the e-form in which you will be able to submit your ideas. So that was, uh, and these are the rules and the facts about the partner set. So now let's go to some quick uh, uh, tips for creating your partnership. And let's start that we are a cooperation program and cooperation is what matters above all. And we know that here we are uh, addressing to universities. So you, of course you can do research, you can do education, you can do other things, but demonstrate that you are co uh, in, in your in your application form that you are cooperating with the other entities. And it's not about like uh, doing your things in your university and the other uh, partner will be doing their things in their place. If you demonstrate that you are doing actions that wouldn't be possible without the cooperation of the other partner, uh, you are making some extra points in there. So uh, I try to demonstrate this that what you are doing wouldn't be able uh, wouldn't be possible if you are doing only by yourself even with the same budget you are getting some exchanges and some benefits by working with other entities make sure that your partners are eligible and deliver timely so about uh, being timely is just trying to find uh, serious partners. And I know that sometimes it's difficult to 
assess if, if an entity will be serious or not when you don't know them. So of course, always advise to, to have in your partnership some entities that you already know. And, uh, but try to, I mean, try to assess from the very, uh, from the very first time how serious um, they are if they send the uh, information required uh, soon. I mean, try to see uh, how they work because they are partners that you are going to work with for several years. And if they are not serious, it's going to be a long problem. And about the eligibility, I want to stress out uh, above all the geographical eligibility. You saw that um, the, ge the, 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 the geographical area covered by the program are 15 countries, but in some countries it's not the whole country which is uh, eligible. And I would go with, with two, two examples. So in uh, Turkey, um, uh, um, uh, Istanbul is not in the, in the eligible uh, area, or in Italy, Milan is not in the, in the area. So entities from those cities wouldn't be eligible. But sometimes happens that a partner from another country might tell you that he is eligible, but he's not. So try to check it by yourself. And it's also, let's uh, imagine that this uh, partner from Milano tells you that they have an office in Rome. So that would make them eligible. But it's not only this. To be uh, eligible, this partner must have. And I mean, it's not only about uh, renting an office. They must have a, an office from uh, at least two years prior to the launch of, um, of the call. And this office should host uh, people with the capacity to represent and to take financial commitments for the entity, for the whole entity. So it means they should have uh, power of attorney. So try to make sure that people in this office, they have the legal powers to represent and to act on behalf of the entity. If not, they would they would uh, be uh, um, uh, declared non-eligible and the whole project would fall. Of course, partners must have uh, some uh, financial capacity and it means that uh, try to Let's say that uh, if a partnership is full of small entities, uh, NGOs, associations, there are many. They are so small. They uh, or um, SMEs that 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 they have uh, that uh, presented uh, losses in the in the annual accounts and so on. That might jeopardize a bit the assessment. So try to combine. So uh, uh, public entities are uh, declared with a full financial capacity, private entities will be assessed one by one, their annual accounts will be required. So try to make sure that also they, they are mm, mm, financially uh, healthy, because if not, it's not a case of ineligibility, but it might take out some points from the, from the proposal. And of course, uh, the partners that you reach uh, try to show that these partners have the capability to reach the final be beneficiary and address the needs of final beneficiaries. We will assess in the in the in the in the program uh, how uh, how uh, what's what's the impact of of the project, and we measure the impact in terms of how you reach those final ben beneficiaries. So that's important. So that. By one hand, uh, if you find in your, your partnership like uh, small uh, NGOs or uh, associations, those entities usually have a bigger capacity to uh, uh, to reach the beneficiaries. So that's why we also want them in the, in the partnerships. And this is important. And this is uh, for you all. Universities in this program are not only about education and research. And we mean this because um, in the current program, we have several universities that what they did are not only uh, like uh, research, like uh, 
uh, university campuses are spaces where things happen, when, where uh, people interact. And for example, we had a project in which what they did is that uh, apply uh, energy efficiency measures in, in the campus, okay, in se several, several ways. So you can I think about projects in which you do things in the campus, like uh, waste management. You can also work on about uh, water management, circular economy. You can also think about projects in which you improve the lives of students, professors, staff. Um, so do not think about only uh, do, doing like um, academic stuff, not only about uh, uh, writing papers. Of course, you can do this, but the options are open. So think about also what can you do to improve the life in the, in the campuses and apply it in a, in a proposal. A partnership should have a balanced distribution of, um, of course, tasks, profiles, and countries. So we talk about countries and profiles. Um, a partnership in which there are only universities might be difficult. It's not impossible. Okay, we have some cases, but very few ones in which of of, uh, of a partnership of the same profile. But usually, when you mix different profiles in a in a partnership, you can reach the different uh, tasks. So uh, universities, uh, associations. Uh, public authorities, lo 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 local authorities, regional uh, foundations, uh, SMEs. So they are all accepted. If you manage to to involve several profiles, I think that you may you might be able to gain some points from a proposal with only universities. It's not impossible, but yes, um, I just want to warn you about this. And um, if you want to find partners, really go to the uh, to our uh, our current program. We have eighty projects. Uh, they gather around six hundred partners. So why not um, uh, uh, contacting some of them and inviting them to the, to the partnership? They have the advantage that they already know how the program works. So that would be a uh, and step uh, forward. So you, you can find the 80 projects. For every pro project, you, you can see a partner. And for every partner, you can see several contact uh, um, the details of several people. So that will be a good start and, and a good uh, database of potential partners for your project. And this is not about the partnership, but also but, uh, about uh, management that just the moment in which you um, in which you uh, write your proposal, try to demonstrate that your management methodology is able to anticipate potential risks and to enable mitigation uh, uh, solutions for those risks and for those potential uh, hazards. So try to de demonstrate that. That, that you are capable to monitor the project in uh, every step and you will have the means to solve any potential problem. And of course, if you demonstrate that the results of your project will, will remain there, that your project will leave a legacy for some benefits that will stay there after the closure of the project, you will also be uh, making some extra points. So try to explain what what will you do that will remain and will be there uh, two, three, five years after. Because always evaluators like to read that the results uh, are are stable and will uh, and will be there for a long term. And um, well, we are these days we are repeating an uh, expression, which is that we don't want you to reinvent the wheel. So what we want in this program is that you apply solutions and you provide means that we know that they work. So uh, of course, if you want to 
apply solution from previous projects, things that you know they worked in pre previous contexts, and now you want to um, apply them in the, in the new project, this is more than welcome, okay? So uh, if you want to do research, of course, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, feasible. I wouldn't go for TRLs uh, uh, very low. So if you are doing a thing with a low TRL, I mean, uh, you know that the lower uh, and, the, and the more uh, uh, basic is the, is the research, the more risky it is. So make things that you know that they are likely to work and to deliver results. And uh, that's all from my side. I hope that these tips were useful for you all, and we really look forward to have universities in the in the new program. And as you know, we will launch the call very soon, and we will be more than happy to answer your questions and to and to foster you in the new uh, interact next next panel. Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias, Alejandro, and thank you very much. Uh, there are a lot of questions, and I I try to summarize. Uh, all of them, and uh, to to and to give you, to give you the time to, to answer. Um, let me say just before that I give the floor again to Jumana. Uh, some I would like to underline something after the two presentations, and obviously also after the presentation of the insight. Added value and the impact. Added value is important. We have to be. Uh, not necessarily original enough, but to be sure that we are proposing something that contributes in a positive way to what we are discussing about. And once we show the other value, we have to show very clearly that we know what we are discussing about, not only in, in contents, but also relating to the policies related to that issues in every single country. We have to show that we know the debate, we know the legislation, for instance, we know the reform process, we know and we are able to explain that our projects in a way is are contributing to that issue in that regions, in that, in that countries and so on. This is very important. No? It's not just a fantastic idea, but this fantastic idea should be in line with the expectation of the country. Impact, in all the projects we have this uh, sort of nightmare to demonstrate the impact of our project and so on. Impact in itself is also an added value. If we are able to show that the project will remain a sustainability with a, with a concrete and important sustainability plan, this will help, obviously, our projects not only to be funded, but uh, again, to be stable and to consolidate the result in the future. The other issues very, uh, very interesting is the eligibility. There are a lot of questions on this concept of eligibility. Uh, and I would like also to add something, but please consider this very carefully. Now we will discuss. And also, uh, an important issue for all our participants, partner research. I think a partner research is to be done very, very, um, in a very proper way, because the risk is that you submit a fantastic proposal, but at the end, in particular, looking for other actors in, 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 uh, that should participate in this, uh, in this project that don't have the capacity, not only the financial capacity, but the capacity to manage international projects. They are probably good for the partnership, but you should be also top 100% convinced that they are also able to implement the project and to manage the project properly. Okay, I will start with the questions. If you agree, Jumana, Alejandro, or you want to say something, but of course, we will share all the presentation after the end. We will send everything by email. We will publish in, in our uh, website. Um, 
about the question uh, how many months the call will be open, if I understood well, until the end of March. We will know something more or less uh, today. Jumana, you want to uh, Yeah, something? if you if you want, I can, I can go through all the questions and yes. give an answer to make sure that we, we don't miss anyone. So the first yes. question is Anastasia from Greece. And um, by regulation, the call must be open at least three months. So you you are you can be relieved that at least three months the call will be open and most probably uh, we will close it by end of March if this is the plan. And um, where the second question by Ahmed about um, if one project per organization can be regarded the main applicant uh, on the one project per organization. Okay, so a, a big organization like universities, we have nine specific objectives, which means that as a university you could apply as lead applicant up to nine projects meaning one project per specific objective but what you cannot do is two project as lead applicant on the same specific uh, objective um, uh, it's important sorry Jimana, it's important because there are a lot of questions in this the, the university is not every single faculty of every single department we consider the university as a unique uh, uh, organization, directorate, let, let me say in this way. Because otherwise, if I understood the well, way, please let me know if it's correct or not. Yes, exactly. We consider it as one organization, the whole university, including all the faculties and the departments. Um, Okay, so they are asking, Margaret Asmar is asking, yeah, it's hard to know when the university is very large. Usually each university has its own international project office who should be coordinating all the proposals. So they should have internal ways to, to detect if uh, the, your neighboring uh, department is applying for the same uh, specific objective as, a, as an applicant. Um, what else? Okay, so we have uh, from Bruno Smaja. My organization is based in Paris, but the action is dedicated to the regions part of the program. As my colleague Alejandro already answered, uh, if you don't have a regional office, which is financially independent from the headquarters, uh, and at least from two, uh, since two years, then it's not uh, possible because the the main organization is not in, located in an eligible uh, region. Um, then we have about financial agreements signed by Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon has not signed yet, but we are quite positive that they should be signed. They should sign the financial agreement before the, the call is closed. I'm quite confident from the, our experience with uh, with Lebanon, but obviously it's not, I mean I cannot tell you one hundred percent sure. And today, um, it's not signed yet. Um. Okay, regarding the consoli consolidation call, I think it's a bit early to talk about that because uh, the mm -hmm. program itself does not have all these details. So so we will communicate it about it uh, later on. Um, what Same question from the oh, US about US. University of Evora. Unfortunately, the University of Evora is not located in an eligible region, but if they do have a kind of regional office uh, working in Algarve, the same as we just said before regarding the organization based in Paris, if they have an independent um, like a regional office, but having their prop their their own account, then uh, it could be. Um, what the what's the difference between applicant and lead partner? When you submit a proposal, we call you an applicant. Once the proposal is being evaluated and if it's um, approved and financed, then we uh, call you lead partner. It's the same, but different stage of the of the process. Um, about Helwan University in uh, Egypt, you are lucky because under NCBC Med, Cairo was not an eligible region, but now the Cairo uh, governorate is eligible. So if it's located in this governorate, uh, you can apply. Um, 
and you should become an UNIMED member, let me say. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. What? Go Excuse ahead. me? Uh, I was joking for a one university to join UNIMED, but it's, I'm joking. Please go ahead. <laughs> uh, about uh, allocated amount for Lebanon. Uh, we are not allocating amount per country. We are allocating uh, funds per project. So each project has different entities from different countries, and we do not divide the budget per country. Um, I can uh, send you the link with the, the section in our website where you, you can find all the national contact points per country, including the one from Egypt. And in any um, case, it's in your website, this information. Yes, it depends. If you want uh, a question related to our call directly, it's better to, to ask either uh, the branch office, the support office based in Valencia or in Aqaba. But if it's something related to national legislation, yeah. you want to check that your entity is uh, registered as a body governed by public law or uh, this kind of more uh, national related uh, things, then I, I recommend to contact the national contact point. But I wouldn't right. uh, contact him for, for just... Um, uh, information related to our goals uh, as in, in general. Are university eligible for youth-oriented projects? This is a good question. I guess it depends if you have a specific department only working with young people, about young people, you might be uh, eligible. I have to investigate this. It's the uh, first time uh, we, if, we if have I this question. Hear, if I may, is, the, is for these projects, Partnership must have uh, at least two entities that comply with this rule, but it doesn't mean that all the entities should comply. So if you are in a in a youth project and you have these other two entities uh, complying with the rule, you will be uh, uh, eligible for this kind of project. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. Again, about uh, the financial agreement, uh, the question from Rafael Vinaldi, if all the southern countries have signed the agreement? No, not yet, not all of them. So obviously it's a little bit more risky to yeah. to look for a partner from a country whose government has, has not signed yet. Um, but uh, we, we are, again, we are confident that mm, they should be signing by the end, uh, before the end of the call. Um, what else? Should the financial contribution be in currency or an equivalent? Uh, for example, provision of equipment, conference or meeting group. Uh, your partner contribution, which in case you apply for a, a co-fund co up to 89%, uh, so the 11% that each partner has to fund, it can be either uh, in cash or it can be also human resources. This doesn't mean that at some point you may need to advance the, the the money while waiting for the reporting and for the installment to be transferred. Uh, but yeah, the contribution can be also uh, through equipment or human resources. Mm. So if the, the question by Daniela uh, Vianney, would it be positively evaluated if a project on a S SO specific objective also demonstrate impact in other specific objectives. This doesn't uh, impact in the evaluation because the evaluator is only evaluating about this specific objective, no matter if it contributes to another or not. Um, yes, of course, if you present as a coordinator, as a lead applicant, uh, you can perfectly apply for other projects as partners. This is the question from Amira from Egypt. Um, so about the youth projects, we already explained what type of organization are eligible. You have it on the presentation and I shared on the chat the, the link to, to the presentation. Um, and also Alejandro added some, some complementary information about the youth uh, project. The partner search platform, uh, maybe Alejandro, you can uh, uh, reply to Doriana Galante question when uh, when it will be available. We will launch it right after we announce 
the call and so I guess it will a matter of of date. I mean it's it's almost ready. So I would say that the partnership platform should be uh, working within maximum two weeks after the launch of the call. And then, well, I take the um, oh, uh, occasion to answer and to give some uh, information on other other topic that was uh, asked. It's, uh, it's about if there is any country that has not signed yet the uh, agreement when the call is launched. So in the previous program, what we did is that we uh, included a clause in which if you included a partner from a country that that at the end of the of the of the call has not signed uh, the agreement, you will have the opportunity to change it for other partner yeah. that uh, from a country that 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 it's uh, uh, eligible. So you wouldn't be uh, excluded. You will have this uh, opportunity, and the proposal that would be evaluated would be the proposal with a new partner. So. We do it so don't be afraid to include a partner that you don't know if the country would be uh, um, or not, uh, because you will have the opportunity to change it for other one. We hope that the thing is over during many days before the post. Because uh, it's many days. But in any case, thanks for the clarification. It's important because. Please, yeah, ahead, let, ahead. let's continue because we have so many uh, questions and we are running out of time. So Abdel Karim Arusi from Algeria, uh, he's asking if a uh, university can associate with a public authority, uh, such as a ministry, let's say, as a partner, if they have to be in the eligible area. Uh, in the case of ministries, you have some exception. I mean, in, in if your country, the capital is not in an eligible region, uh, but... Um, it is a national entity, uh, it could be. Um, and also it reminds me, I forgot to mention that another um, rule we have in the call is that you can only have maximum two partners from the same country. Um, something which is also making me think about uh, from his question. Um, we have also the figure of what we call an associate partner, who is a partner, but does not receive a budget. and. From our experience, we have many cases of universities or NGOs or different type of uh, organization as partners, and then they add the municipality or the ministry as an associate partner. Why? Because we believe uh, one of our main principles is the co-ownership. If you make, uh, if you, you you want to implement something that may have some uh, repercussion on the um, local municipal regulation, if you don't have the municipality involved in this project somehow, then you have less chances to, to have some influence and have some impact. So either you can include them as a main partner, or you can also include them as associate partners, more for the policy um, impact, so to say, so to speak. Um, so if the partnership includes universities, startups, and VC fund, is it better to have a lead that is a university, a startup, or a VC? I don't know what's a VC, but what I can say I is- capital, I think. Okay. Yeah. I would definitely say it's better to have the lead partner, the, the university, because the university are usually solid institution. They don't have any problem in terms of financial capacity, and uh, they have uh, experience of different international projects. Mm, social enterprise are definitely eligible and more than welcome because we uh, really want to encourage uh, social enterprise uh, in some of our uh, specific objectives that are clearly um, mentioned. Um, so again, for Lebanon, it depends if the Lebanese government will sign or not. No, no clear, no definite answer regarding this. Um, how we can know if we are in an eligible region. We have the main document, it's called the program document. We, it's available in English, approved by the European Commission in last December 22. And we also have the translation in French and Arabic. I'll show you the link. It's already in the link that I, I shared. 
And at the very beginning of this document, you have the list of the countries with all the codes and the eligible briefs. So you can just by looking at this document at the very beginning, uh, you will find all the eligible regions uh, listed. I do confirm that unfortunately, Morocco is not an eligible country. Uh, so we are in the uh, AESBL from Belgium and working with seven EU countries that attack and we apply, unfortunately not, because Belgium is not a Mediterranean country. Um, okay, regarding the question for the context, I, I leave Unimed to see with the data protection directive if you can show the context or not for the networking. Um, oh, I can see that uh, Natalie already shared the link with the eligible regions. Uh, again, about the budget integration, it's all in the presentation we, we did. You can find it in the link. Duration of projects between two and three years and the budgets between 500,000 for youth-oriented projects up to 2.5 million euro for their project. Um, Okay. okay, participation of institution from Palestine and Israel. Obviously, it's very sensitive and very difficult for us to, to answer this question. So I cannot, I mean, uh, those two countries have not signed the financial agreement for the moment. And uh, I don't have any guarantee regarding this. So uh, for the moment, I cannot uh, tell more. What else? If your partner, uh, if you, your partner in the country that have not signed, Alejandra, explain what what, uh, what happened. So we haven't published yet uh, the names of the countries who have signed the financial agreement, but I, I guess that this information will be uh, published as soon as we officially launch the call. Okay. So Abdel Karim from Algeria, again, our university is not in an eligible region. If we associate with the ministry, which is an eligible area, is it okay to submit? No, if your university, unfortunately, if your university is not based in an eligible region, then you cannot submit. Um, okay, I so I think that's it. And that's it. Thank you, Jumana. Thank you, Alejandro. I also saw some uh, comments from uh, Professor Hamid Benaziza, which is our Secretary General, uh, related to, let me say, a critical point of view on on this uh, on this program. Uh, but I think that this should be discussed in another moment jointly with our members. And because we have to, obviously, not only to, to try to implement as better as possible the participation in this program, but surely to ask more to the European Commission for the Mediterranean and for the common issues and the common challenges that we have in front of us. It's a pity, as Jumana said, that, uh, for instance, Morocco is not part of the program, this is a political issue. It's a pity that, uh, fortunately, Libya is not part of the program, and this depends also on the current situation. At the same time, it's important to underline this uh, uh, cooperation, this cooperation program that is part of the Interreg uh, family. Uh, it's a very, very interesting opportunity and occasion. It's not a new program. It's already F. An important experiences on, on in the last years, and I think that we can we have to use these experiences. I have a question related to that in particular. If a project to try to create some connection with other interreg med interreg projects that are already working, for instance, I mean the interreg Euromed, and try to demonstrate the interconnectivity of the project proposal. To other projects that are already working, if these could be an added value, and also related to uh, the financial capacity. Once you look to financial capacity of private organization or at least not public organization, 
if this could affect in a way uh, the capability of the partner to be leader or to be in any case a partner because this is, I remember that was in the previous program in the previous call for proposal of the previous program was a particular sensitive uh, sensitive issue and then I think that we can close because we are 10 minutes out of the day. I would like also to mention that we arrive at the end more or less with the same participants of the, the, the beginning. This means that was very productive Session. Thanks a lot, Jumana, Keandro, and Bansa for your presentation and for your availability and for your also commitment to answer to all the questions. Please, Jumana, if you have any comments on my questions, and if you want to say something more, please. No, just uh, thank you very much. I think it's a good opportunity to also get to, to inform about this program to new um, university who might not be aware of, of our program. Uh, I invite you to follow us on social media, uh, to check our website regularly, and also don't miss the information days that we will be uh, organizing in the coming months to explain more in details uh, the specificities uh, of this call and the opportunities that you, you can have by applying. So thank you, and I'm sure we'll keep in touch. Thanks a lot, Shumana. Thanks, Alejandro. Uh, please here. Yeah. Pass my greetings and thanks to Vincent, thanks Natalie and the media, and let me thank all our participants for your active participation. We will send everything by email, but uh, the recording and all the material available. We already shared some links in the chat, uh, but again, we will uh, send to all, all of you. And if you have any questions on the program, please contact the national, the, the, the contact point, contact the agencies, but feel free obviously to contact also UNIMED and we will do our best to support our members in participating in these programs uh, with the right, the right obviously, uh, opportunity. Thanks a lot. I wish you a beautiful day and a very nice weekend. In the coming days and thanks a lot for your active participation thank you Juman, again alejandro let's keep in touch for future opportunities bye 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 bye, bye. 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 bye.